Hello and welcome to my tutorial. In this one we're going to be doing the vehicle body in Godot. Uh, you can see an example of it going on here. So we've got full suspension, uh, we've got steering, we've got engine torque and this uh, vehicle body node uh, is a little bit difficult, a little bit tricky so I try and do this tutorial as quickly as I can. Um, uh, there is a longer tutorial if you want to see it you can um, click the link that's in the video right now but this one hopefully should be nice and fast and we'll just go through exactly how it works and have a working vehicle by the end of it. So step one is we need to make ourselves a brand new empty project. When the project's up and running, you want to make yourself a brand new 3D scene. I'm just going to rename this one to game. And I'm going to make sure that I also save this. So that I don't forget and we're going to get straight back into this. So next thing we want to do is we want to create ourselves a ground. So if you add a brand new node as a mesh instance, Make that mesh instance, rename that to ground, and make that mesh instance a cube, and just click on the cube, and we'll make this one um, nice and big for the ground, so I'm going to make that 50 by 1 by 50. And we'll just make sure that it's centered in the world. Also, uh, we need to create the uh, tri-mesh static body, so click on ground, click on the mesh, and create that um, collision mesh for it. The ground material is also pretty bad, so let's improve that. If you make a new spatial material for that cube that we've just made and just click on it, what we want to do is change this albedo color. So if you go to the albedo, drag on the um, icon texture on top of it, and it's horribly stretched. So we'll just change the flags for world triplanar on, and then go down to UV set one and click triplanar, and I'll just wrap it across the whole of the surface, which makes things a lot easier to see. And let's get on with this car. So if you uh, add a child to the game, we're going to make this our vehicle body node. So if we add this vehicle body node in here, uh, the next step would be adding, uh, just drag it above the ground a little bit, and then we want to add the uh, some sort of physical mesh for it so we can see it. So if we add a child node of a mesh instance again, uh, we're going to make a mesh instance cube this time. So just go across the mesh, change it to cube, and we'll just change the size of it in here. So I'm just going to make this um, 1.5 on the X, 0.5 on the Y, and 3 on the Z, so approximate the size of my car. And we want to also create the collision mesh for it too, so click on the uh, mesh itself and just use a simplified convex collision. And I'm just going to rename this uh, mesh instance here to uh, car body, and you can replace this with anything that you would like. I'm also just going to quickly change this vehicle body uh, name, I'm going to rename that to car, that makes sense. And then uh, create our first wheel, so add a child node, and if you search for wheel you'll see the vehicle wheel node. This vehicle wheel we need to rename to the correct name, so I'm going to call this front left wheel so that we're able to um, identify each of them as we need to. I'm just going to take that wheel and I'm going to move it into uh, the position that I want. So I'm just going to hold control and drag it across and uh, up to the front because the front is the positive Z there in the direction of the blue axis. So I'm pretty happy with its position right there. The wheel settings themselves need to be tweaked just a little bit and you'll find them just in the inspector. One of the main things I want to change here is I want to change the radius, so I'll move this to uh, 0 0.4. Um, the suspension is also um, a bit of an issue, the default value is way too low, so um, change that stiffness value to 50. And in the damping we want to set that compression, that again is way too low, set that 1.9. And for the relaxation we want to set that to 2, which will give us a much better result. We want to add a uh, visual as well, so let's add a mesh instance again as a child of that front left wheel. So find the mesh instance, we'll make it into a cylinder which matches the shape of a wheel mostly and change some of these values, so click on the cylinder. We want to make the radius, the top and bottom radius, both the same as we've got for our wheel, so that's 0 0.4. Let's make the height something like um, 0 0.25 and uh, then we don't need 64 segments so let's just drop that right down to 12, give us a low poly look. And then we can go down to the transform here because you'll see it's at the wrong orientation. So if we just change the Z rotation um, to uh, 90 degrees so it'll face the right way. We also want to make a different colour, so if you just go up to the uh, mesh itself, you'll see the material, make a new spatial material and just click on that and change that albedo colour to black, so it matches kind of like a tyre. 
So I'm pretty happy with the wheel. Um, all we really need to do now is uh, duplicate it for all of the other parts. So um, you can actually just copy paste these, which is quite impressive. So um, you just need to click on the top level car because we want it to be um, a sibling of the other wheel. And we'll just rename each of them so that they're correct. So I'm going to make this one the front right wheel and then I can get rid of that number two. And I just want to select it and um, drag it across to the other side. Then with um, both of the front and uh, front wheels selected, we can actually control D to duplicate them and I'll just move those two wheels back. And again, um, I'm just using the control to snap them into position so that they're pretty um, uh, symmetrical and we'll just rename each of those so they're not front wheels anymore. They're uh, back wheels and just change the, get rid of the two as well so that we've got a good naming convention so that we're um, all set to go for uh, writing the code. This one is also the back right wheel. And we also have to remember um, that we want them to do the right thing. So if you select both the front wheels and go over to where it says vehicle body motion, we'll use the front wheels obviously for steering. So you need to tick the user steering and then select both the back wheels and go to the vehicle body motion. And we'll use those as traction. We'll make those the drive wheels. So that's us pretty much set up, ready to write some code. I do want to just quickly test this. So I'm going to add a camera to my scene. So um, to the game, I'm just going to add a, a camera and I'm going to move that back behind the car. So that's in the uh, negative Z and the camera itself faces kind of the wrong way around. So I'm just going to um, go down to the transform for that and flip it around 180 on the Y and just kind of uh, rotate it down so it's looking down towards the car and give this a quick test so we should see the suspension works the car drops to the ground and everything looks good so we'll create a new script for this car so if you click on the car i'm just going to click this uh, add a script on the top i want it to be a completely empty um, one and it's going to be called car so we'll create this this just extends from vehicle body and before we write any code, we're going to need our input map. So if you go to project settings and uh, change the input map, we're going to add um, four new actions. We're going to add a forward, a back, a right and a left. And we'll need to assign the uh, actions, the keys for those. So each one of those is going to be the keys, the W, the S, the A and the D. So I'm just quickly set these up so that we're able to access them in code when it comes to uh, getting the input for, um, for moving the car around. Well, let's get back into the code. So if we just uh, go back to that script that we were um, writing, we're going to um, overload, overload the uh, physics process. So we we'll start with this physics process and we'll set steering to be equal to input dot and we'll use the get axis and we'll uh, use the um, right and then comma left and this will give us values between negative one and one that we'll set our steering value to. And we're just going to multiply that by 0 0.4 so we don't steer too much. Also set the engine force equal to um, the input dot get axis for the um, back and the forward. So if we just do uh, the get axis and use uh, back and then a comma and then forward, and we're going to need some force for that. So we're going to multiply that by some random value like 100. So there we have it. If we test this now, you'll have a completely functional car that can steer and drive with W, A, S and D. It can go forward and it can go back. There are a couple of problems. Uh, so if you want to uh, keep going with this video feel free we're going to improve this a little bit by um, trying to smooth out the steering a little bit and we're also going to try and uh, make sure that we can accelerate infinitely the steering one is a pretty easy one to solve if you just go back to your code uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to lerp this uh, steering value so we want to lerp from the current steering um, value uh, up to the value that we'd like from the input so we leave that part there and then we just uh, say the speed that we're going to learn by so we're going to just multiply that by five times del and that's how quickly it will move to the value that we're asking for if you save this and test it you should see that when you turn right and left this the wheels actually move slowly towards there rather than just instantly being at that particular steering value um, getting the uh, car to have some sort of mechanical drag is a little bit harder. So we'll create a few variables at the top of our code here to explain this. So we want to have a maximum RPM. That's the highest value that the wheels can be turning at. We also want to have the um, maximum torque. So the maximum value of the engine force that it can possibly be. And we're going to do a, an equation to work out 
what um, the actual uh, value will be. So we're going to take this as an input. So we'll create a variable for this uh, input and uh, we'll call this acceleration. And then we want to just work out what the actual RPM is of any specific wheel. So we'll drill down, um, create a variable called RPM and we'll drill down into the RPM of the actual wheel. So if you just find um, with the dollar sign, we'll use the back left wheel for the first one and we'll type in RPM and there's a get RPM function that works out what the RPM actually is and we've stored that in RPM. And then we can do a calculation. It's a bit confusing, so you just have to trust me on this one. So we're going to set the back left wheel's engine force to the equation that, um, that follows. So we're going to say the um, acceleration, so the, the input value. We're going to multiply that by the actual um, maximum torque that we can possibly apply. And then we're also going to multiply that by uh, 1 minus the um, RPM, the current RPM, divided by the maximum RPM. And that will just give us uh, some sort of mechanical drag style equation so that we um, can't accelerate infinitely. And we want to just uh, copy this, um, all of this, without the var part um, underneath and change this for the back right wheel. So I've just paste that in. Remember, we've not got the var for the RPM. I want to change this to back right wheel. And everything else is exactly the same. It's the, the same um, equation. We don't need to change it. We just need to apply it to both of the back wheels. And uh, just make sure before we test this that we remove that times 100. That was sort of like the default torque value. So that should work. We'll test this out and uh, you should see that uh, everything works as expected. It's kind of behaving as before, only this time we've made a significant improvement to the code. So there we have it. I'm just going to move the um, camera uh, into a child of the car. So I've set out a zero X rotation, position it above the car and then just drag it um, onto, drag the camera onto the car uh, to make it a child of the car so it moves around. Uh, I just uh, made a few little ramps in there as well so we can drive around on it. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this series. This is the uh, 12 and a half minute super short version of the car tutorial that I did. And uh, yeah, stick with the series and uh, we'll do the camera, um, chase camera next.